A new TikToker has taken the platform by storm, and for a very unconventional reason, this woman has basically the entire app of TikTok wrapped around her as she produces hours of content about how she found out that her husband was a true pathological liar. Even though this is funny and entertaining, it speaks volumes as to why people are so desperate for real good entertainment, and Hollywood needs to take notes. Before we dive into this story, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and then ring that notification bell so that you never miss an episode. If you guys don't know, there's a series on TikTok called Who the F Did I Marry? It's a 52-part series, and each part is like 10 minutes long, making it eight hours of footage out there. So this 52-part series started with Risa Tisa, who is the host of who the F did I marry? And she breaks down her two-year relationship with a master liar, a master manipulator. You're here for part of the new series that I'm calling Who the Fuck Did I Marry? I'm going to create this playlist series um, and I'm going to tell the story of how I met, dated, married, and divorced a real pathological liar. I'm just going to warn you right now, she does not miss a single detail. Their story is based in Atlanta, Georgia, and she finds out that every little thing her husband ever said to her was a lie. The most bizarre stuff. It's not even lying, but the fact that he would be on the phone for 45 minutes every single morning, but there would be no one on the other line, which was like the most shocking to me. I was thinking about this recently, like, why is this story so popular? And I think it's because, sadly, a lot of women can relate to Reese's story, but she is a phenomenal storyteller. I was so hooked the entire time. I literally could not stop listening. I'd be listening to all the things that Legion lied about, and I just want to give Rice a credit because she was so dedicated. She recorded herself talking for over eight hours. So let's get into it. Who the F did she marry? But listen, before we start, I am not on any individual side. I have to say that before I start. So this woman goes by the name of Risa Tisa on TikTok. I'm not sure if that is her full real name, but now everybody just calls her Risa Tisa, and she has gained almost two million subscribers. Risa lives in Atlanta, Georgia. She is swiping through Facebook dating one night and she sees a man named Legion, and they immediately match up and start a conversation. Then they're talking on the phone about everything in their lives. She goes first, Risa says. Like, let me tell you about my job, family, hobbies, usual stuff. And she said that she has never met another man in her entire life that talks more than her. I mean, the man could talk for days. She's shook. She's getting a Wikipedia page on this man first conversation. He was born in Philadelphia, moved to San Diego, went to university in San Diego, got married with his first wife in San Diego. He tells Risa that he has six siblings in all different states. Then he was working at Apple at one point. He played arena football. He moved to Georgia because he works at a condiment business. He's like, life was so great in California until it started going down until I found my wife was cheating on me. I came home one day to our beautiful family home. There is another man there. We got into a fight, so he got a divorce. He transferred for this job, and that's how he made his way to the good old peach state of Georgia. Now, Legion's trying to build his fresh start, but since he's working all the time, he doesn't really have a chance to make any friends outside of work. Risa is his first real friend, before they're even dating, so they make plans to meet up that weekend at the Cheesecake Factory. She gets ready, she puts on a cute outfit, gets to the door, and as soon as she's about to hit the exit to go to the Cheesecake Factory, She's been on the highway, and then boom, her tire pops. The tire is just flat, so she starts panicking. She gets off the exit, goes to the nearest gas station. She can't fix the tire herself, so she's just sitting there with this flat tire. It's a whole mess, but she does need to call Legion because it sounds like a lie. And she did call him saying, I got to cancel the date because I have a flat tire. And he was quiet for a second, and then in record timing, he pulled up, changes her tire into the spare tire. First thing she notices, though, is that he looks better than his profile pictures. He's 42 years old, and he's a little bit older. He's 6'4". He looks like a regional director. And then after he changes her tire, he's like, hey, 
There's this new tire shop nearby. Let's go and get you a new tire because you can't actually drive on your spare tire for too long. Your spare is not really like another tire. So they drive up to that place, and before she gets the chance, he pays for her tire. He swipes his credit card. This is as good of a first date as it can get, and Risa is so impressed. But there's a whole debate on this, okay? Is this a green flag? Or is this a red flag? I thought it's a green flag. Everyone in the comments is like, that tire was a warning from God, girl. That tire was the universe trying to stop you from meeting this man. Regardless, he fixes her tire, buys her a new tire, and even after all of that, Cheesecake Factory is still open. So they're holding hands as they walk in through the front of the Cheesecake Factory. And at this point, Reese's got butterflies. People are walking past them in the parking lot. And she's like, this could be my new normal. This feels good. This feels right. Like, how comforting is it being with someone that you just know can take care of your problems? This just feels good to her. Now it turns out a lot of couples were on date night that night, so they end up waiting a long time, and Legion immediately gets down to business. He tells her, I'm not here to play games. I'm looking for a wife, my queen, the woman he's going to spend the rest of his life with. That's what he's looking for. He wants the quintessential family, a happy wife with two kids. He tells her that his parents have been married for 40 years, before both of them died. And he wants a family, you know? Like he's painting a vision for her. The kids all wake up in their own rooms, and they all run downstairs for breakfast every morning. They have those family movie nights on the weekends where they all bundle up with popcorn and candy. But that's the vibe he's giving her. And to be fair, he's so good in that. I mean, for her, he was a family man. And giving her this vibe, that to this day, he still keeps in touch with his siblings. And even though, like his first marriage fell through, he still checks in on his two stepkids on a daily basis. He said he doesn't even like his ex-wife, but he likes the kids and he wants to be there for them. And on top of that, he's Christian. And not just like Christian, but Risa says he can quote the Bible like nobody's business. Risa probably has this whole checklist in her mind and he's checking off every single little bunks. So the first date was amazing. It's usually miserable, but there's no awkwardness. Dinner goes so well. In fact, afterwards, they sit in the parking lot until midnight just talking. They're really getting along. So they talk for hours, and he reveals to her, I'm an ex-football player for Arena Football. So when she asks him about it, saying, what is arena football? And turns out it's like a touchy subject. He would just kind of avoid it or kind of get a little bit defensive about it. They go on countless dates. They talk on the phone constantly for the next two weeks. But then all of a sudden, the mayor shut down the city of Atlanta because this happened in 2020. And do you remember how slow time was moving when everybody was in lockdown? Two weeks feels like three months. And Risa, she's like, I know how crazy this sounds, but it's, it made sense in the moment. Why don't we move into Together. Legion will be like, I was in the process of looking for a house to buy, but right now I'm in a one-bedroom studio apartment. Risa lives in a three-bedroom townhouse, so it's very logical for them to quarantine at her place. And from the beginning, he was helping with all, like, the house bills, utilities, everything that had to do with the house. He's a regional manager at the condiment business, so he's making pretty good money, and he wants to take care of his woman. She even admits it was intoxicating being a woman that always takes care of herself. It was intoxicating to not have to worry about paying the bills, like to have a man take care of you for once. Risa is an independent woman. She's never relied on a man for anything, and this is just nice. It's not like she needs it, but it's just nice. But on the other side of this, she is struggling a little bit, because... Ever since she was a kid, she told herself that she would never move in with a man unless it's her husband. I believe she's religious about it, so she never really felt right about the whole situation. But she keeps reminding herself, like, we're on the path to marriage, and if it wasn't for the lockdowns, this probably wouldn't have happened. So this is where life got always bragging about how much money he makes and how he's going to take care of her. They don't have to worry about a single thing. This was the first few videos of Risa's Who the F Did I Marry? But she spends 51 more episodes explaining how every single thing that he said on that first date at Cheesecake Factory was a lie. So, if you guys don't know, buying a house is a pretty step-by-step -step simple process. Getting the money to buy a house that's complicated, but like the actual process, it's annoying, it's tedious. There's a lot of people involved, but everybody goes about it the same way. Now, 
First things, Legion tells the realtor that he's going to buy the house all cash, so this is where it gets really weird. They look at houses in a really big range. So normally, when people buy houses, you have an exact budget, and then maybe you'll go a few thousand over your budget, but you try to stay within your budget. But they were looking at houses anywhere between $300,000 to like $900,000. It's a huge, weird budget, because you already know what kind of house you want, what budget you want. The whole range is kind of bizarre. She seems like she has her stuff together. So she's like, well, I can't pay the mortgage on a $900,000 house. So if we go in this together, I can't do it. I don't want to put my name on it. Like that's a lot of responsibility that I'm not ready for because I don't have those funds. I don't make money like that. And he's like, no, 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 I'm going to pay all cash. So don't even worry about it. I made a lot of money and I invested it. So I'm good. All my money is in an offshore account. So he's like, everybody knows it's smart to have money in an offshore account. Like just trust me because you know taxes. That makes sense because I don't know. It just makes sense. So the couple, they spent all their free time looking for houses, and Risa is having a good time. They find a house. Everything about this house is beautiful, and it's priced at $400,000. It's the perfect size, and they love it. They end up putting an offer on the house. Legion handles everything because her name isn't even going to be on the house since they are not married yet. She is fine with this because it's money he made before they got together. He does all the paperwork and tells her the seller accepted the offer and they are going to go under contract. She's thrilled and starts thinking about decorating. He tells her they need to go to Home Depot because the seller is taking many of the appliances, which is unusual. Usually, you don't take the fridge when you move. Legion explains that they need to buy these appliances. They go to Home Depot with a list of things the seller is taking. They pick out a fridge, stove, and other items. When they go to check out, they are told they can't have the appliances delivered yet because they haven't closed on the house. They pay a $500 deposit and are told the items will be delivered once they give a call. Next, they go to Ashley Furniture to buy furniture. Legion takes pictures of all the barcodes and names, planning to order everything online. She picks out all the appliances and furniture. Meanwhile, Legion is constantly on the phone, receiving thousands of calls daily. All of a sudden, they stop hearing from that realtor. Legion moves from realtor to realtor, trying to find someone who does business the right way. The original house falls through for various reasons. Not always their fault. They go through 25 houses, shopping every weekend, and going to open houses, which is time-consuming and stressful. The excitement fades after the first few houses, and it becomes emotionally draining. If they love a house, but it's out of budget, or someone else puts in a higher offer, it's heartbreaking. Risa is emotionally drained and stressed, feeling that something is off. She starts creating audio diaries, recording her thoughts instead of writing them down. She feels this story could become a Netflix special. If you're buying a house with cash, you need proof of funds before making an offer. Sellers almost never accept an offer without seeing proof of payment. Alarms go off in Risa's head because Legion refuses to show proof of funds until the seller accepts his offer, which is unusual. This happens about 25 times, making her feel like she's on a never-ending roller coaster. Legion's behavior causes several realtors to cut ties with him because he wastes their time. He always has excuses, like the property needing too many repairs or the interest rate being too high. Despite this, Risa decides to stick with him. She's pregnant with his baby, which adds to her stress because she's older, plus size, and worried about a high-risk pregnancy because she's under a lot of stress, like dating a manipulator does that to you, and she kind of feels that something isn't right. Legion is excited, but she is terrified for herself, and I think that she had just had a gut feeling. It just wasn't the way she pictured it's not perfect. Risa starts her pregnancy under a huge amount of stress. She's living with a man she's not married to, and they're not even engaged. Legion does nothing to calm her nerves, giving her a gut feeling that something is wrong. The baby complicates things because she starts to see that Legion isn't who he says he is, but she's about to have his baby. People commented on her video, asking about the proposal. She skipped through it because it was embarrassing. Legion takes her to the Mall of Georgia one day and tells her to pick out a ring. The jeweler says the ring will be mailed to them once it's fitted. Now, the ring process is done, and this is Legion's time to shine. I think picking out a ring together is totally normal, but he tells her, I'm going to give you the ring when I'm ready to give you the ring. Later, at home during a simple dinner, Legion places the ring box on the table and says, so this means you're going to be my wife. 
he never gets up from his seat. He never gets on one knee or asks her to marry him properly. It was sad and not what Risa deserved, but she accepts the ring and becomes his fiance. She didn't want to bring it up in her video because of how embarrassed she was. Risa had a doctor's appointment for an ultrasound one morning. The doctors told her that everything was on track and the baby looked healthy. Excited, she went to work. However, hours later, she started experiencing severe stomach cramps. She ran to the bathroom and everything was red. Alarmed, she went back to the doctors. They rechecked the ultrasounds and devastatingly informed her that the baby no longer had a heartbeat. Distraught, she ran to her best friends and completely broke down. Her best friend immediately grabbed Risa's purse and keys and took her home. Risa felt in her gut that the stress had caused this. Legion met her at home, and together they called the doctor. The doctor gave Risa three options. Undergo a medical removal at the hospital, take a pill at home, or wait for a natural exit. She decided to take the pill. The next three days were the most excruciating pain she had ever felt, especially because she was allergic to the narcotic prescribed. She had to rely on over-the-counter pain relievers. A few days later, she went back to the doctor to verify that everything had passed. Unfortunately, the pill, which usually has a success rate of 93%, did not work for her. The only option left was to go to the hospital for a D&C procedure. Legion tried to support his fiance in every way possible. He promised to take her to the hospital and be there to bring her home. However, two days before the procedure, he canceled. He said he couldn't go with her because the president of the condiment business was coming in for an important meeting, one he couldn't miss as it might lead to a promotion. Risa was furious and disappointed. This wasn't just her problem, it was their problem, and he couldn't even show up. Risa didn't want to tell her family because she didn't want them to stress about it. She felt it was too personal to ask a friend for such a favor. However, she had no choice but to ask someone since she couldn't drive herself. It was utterly embarrassing that her own fiancé couldn't make it and she had to rely on a work friend. When she got to the hospital, she sent a quick text message to Legion to let him know she had made it. Instead of Legion, someone else responded, asking if they should pull Legion out of the meeting. She said no. She was just giving an update. The person replied, I'm sorry you're going through this. Please let me know if there's anything I can do. It was crazy that Legion was pretending to be someone else. Now that we know the full story, this is like 10 times worse. This is crazy. Imagine a woman going through this and he's just being pretending to be his own executive assistant. So after the procedure, Risa was supposed to be in recovery for about an hour. The nurses informed her that they had spoken to Legion and he was on his way to pick her up. However, hours passed and he still hadn't arrived. Finally, Risa was on her way home in Legion's car. She didn't have the energy to argue, feeling drowsy from the drugs and anesthesia. She didn't know it at the time, but Legion had secretly texted her mom and aunt to leave her alone for a week. Legion was trying to isolate her. Maybe he didn't want her to talk about the horrendous experience, fearing her family would convince her he wasn't the right guy. Or maybe he just didn't want her to have a support system. Or perhaps he just wanted to be the only one there for her. Either way, it was sickening. On the day of Reese's procedure, Legion had a big day at work. He told Risa that the person who texted her was his new executive assistant because he was now the vice president of production. This was his excuse for missing the procedure. He wanted to make a good impression on his first day as vice president. Despite his new role, Legion's schedule didn't change much. He still left for work at 6.15 a.m. and came home by 3.30 p.m. wearing his usual blue cargo pants, rubber sole shoes, and company t-shirt. He excused this by saying he walked the production line all day and couldn't do that in a suit and tie, which made sense. Now that his position had changed, he needs a new car, so now let's go to the car shopping experience and this where things got crazy. Legion claimed he needed to shop for a company car dot instead of a house. Now it's a car every weekend. They visited dealerships, looking at Audi, BMW, Range Rover, Jaguar, and Mercedes. He told the salesperson he needed the paperwork with the full car price, tax, tag, and title, supposedly how you buy a company car. Legion often made calls to the person in his company responsible for wiring the money, always ending with some excuse as to why the payment couldn't be made immediately. This stressful routine wasn't fun for Risa, and also what a waste of time why would you want to go test drive something that you know in your right mind that you're not going to own. So now Legion insisted she get a new car too, 
But Reza respond that I actually, I like my car. It's fine. It works well. And he's like, no, when we have a family, you're going to need a better car, promising to pay for it with his new $200,000 salary. So Risa is like, okay, I've always wanted a Kia and Legions. Like, no, you got to get something better. Choose between a BMW or an Audi. And he keeps pushing her. So despite her initial reluctance, she eventually picks out an Audi Q5 after being convinced by Legion. Days passed, and Legion told Risa the car would be delivered between 1 o'clock to 3 p.m. Finally, the day arrived, but by 3 p.m., she's sitting in her kitchen laughing, laughing, because at this point, it's so ridiculous that you can't help but laugh, and the car never shows. And at this point, she doesn't even remember the excuses that have been made to explain why it never came. She doesn't even care. At this point, Risa started to think Legion found sick satisfaction in making her excited about something, only to let her down. Like to see her get so excited and then let down is that the joy for him, all the houses, all the cars he never follows through. And then why would he go that far? Risa decided she would buy a car with her own money one day and told Legion to never talk to her about buying her a car again. She was tired of the disappointments and just wanted to enjoy her family during the holidays. Legion, on the other hand, constantly prioritized his family, often spending 30 to 40 minutes at a time on the phone with them, whether it was one of his ex's stepkids, one of his six siblings, or someone else. He just keeps coming up with lies for everything. For example, one time they were driving by his condiment business, and he said, Do you see that big building? That's the HQ where I work. She replied, Oh, let me stop by. I want to see where you work since we're getting married. He said, Of course we can stop by, but my key card only gets me to my office floor, not the front door. I have to check in with security so they can let me in. He called his security buddy, and the security wasn't at work. Legion was really quick on his feet, always coming up with excuses. At this point, Risa was trying to understand why she stayed with him. Part of her wanted to believe him, while another part was curious about what lie he'd come up with next. For months, all she'd gotten were disappointments and empty promises. Risa had three main reasons for staying. She didn't want to be alone. She didn't want to be embarrassed by the relationship ending, and she wanted to get married badly. She kept saying, it's my time, because she saw everyone around her having perfect families and relationships. She felt it was finally her turn. Risa became distant. Legion knew their feelings weren't strong, so he promised to do whatever it took to make her feel at ease. He didn't want her to slip away. He even asked her if they should get married. Risa didn't tell anyone about her wedding because she didn't want to get their hopes up. She internalized his empty promises so much that even a few hours at the courthouse felt like any excuse could come up at any moment. None of Risa's family and friends knew what was going on behind the scenes. Two main things in the marriage paperwork stood out. Previous marriages, where he wrote one, and his social security number. When he wrote his social security number, something in Reese's gut was like, I need to memorize this. I need to burn it into my brain. After they came back from the courthouse, she ran a background check on her husband on their wedding night. She believed he loved her. And as long as the check came back clean, she could let go of her anxieties. The background check revealed no criminal background, but she ran a full check which would take some time. They got married in early January, and she was supposed to get the results by the end of January. For that month, everything seemed okay. Then, Legion received a phone call from his family, saying his grandmother had passed away from COVID. It was sudden, and he was devastated. Risa felt bad for him, knowing how much his grandmother meant to him. Three weeks later, Legion told Risa that his uncle had gone to the hospital for and ultimately died. This was overwhelming for Risa. She never thought anyone would lie about death, so she pushed her gut feeling aside. Legion became paranoid about getting COVID and turned into an annoying clean freak. She rationalized this as a response to his family members' deaths. One night, they went out to eat, and he randomly asked her if he ever told her where his grandmother was buried. He took her to the cemetery, which felt weird. The gravestone had only their last name, no first names which was bizarre. Legion also gave Risa a detailed story about his ex-wife, Tara. He described a tumultuous divorce process, but eventually they started co-parenting amicably. Even though he was in Georgia, he would call the kids daily to help with homework. Then, 
Legion said Tara was moving to Georgia with her kids. This felt weird to Risa. They had several fights about it, especially since Risa was pregnant before her miscarriage. Risa was upset that Legion had told Tara about the pregnancy, feeling it wasn't her business. One day, Risa came home to find an envelope on the table. Everyone in her life knew she dreamed of going to London, so she was ecstatic to find a London itinerary with a hotel booking. Legion knew how much this meant to her and presented it as their honeymoon. She gets the paperwork to renew their passports, and she's looking up the hotel, memorizing the itinerary she's living for. This the next day, she noticed the plane tickets were missing from the itinerary. As expected, the plans fell through leaving her deeply disappointed. And it was just the same exact feeling when she was looking at houses when she was looking at cars. But this time, it felt incredibly personal, like this was her dream, and he crushed it all of it. Is her dream having a family moving everything? So it must be emotionally draining forever damaged. And things just start changing every day. One day, Legion gave Risa money for a manicure and pedicure. Mid-pedicure, she got a text from him saying someone was looking for her at the house. She was immediately suspicious, not having been involved with anyone since before meeting Legion. Legion described the visitor as a man in a black Dodge Charger, which made her even more suspicious since she knew no one who drove that car. Risa asked Legion to describe App and immediately sees the first unread message, which is when are you coming to get this panini? She clicks it open and Legion is asking her the same question earlier. When are you going to give me some panini? Maybe they want to go eat some panini. And the first thing Risa noticed is how graphic and nasty Legion was accurate. She immediately confronts him. He downplayed it, saying nothing happened and he was just playing around. He then offered to delete Facebook Messenger missing the point entirely. Risa set new boundaries. He moved into the guest bedroom. They would attend marriage counseling, and they would present a united front for her visiting family. The marriage counselor ends up being Risa Pastor. During counseling, he realized their lack of intimacy and affection. Legion continued to downplay his cheating, getting defensive. He also requests that they make a joint bank account, but Risa respond well. I want to know how much money you have also, because we're married, and he refuses to show her can't get up for weeks. He's not eating anything. He's just sitting and icing his knee for hours. He would make excuses to push off doctor's appointments. It was a lot for her. She's like taking care of him full time on top of that, and he's a liar. She's very sympathetic. She's a very caring woman. One day, while she was at work, Legion called, crying that his stepdaughter had died from He asked Risa to send to his ex-wife $2,000 for the funeral, which she did out of sympathy. Later, Risa decided to get a new job because she wants to make more money. So now she goes in to fill in the background check, but not just for herself, but for her husband too, and needed Legion's information for a background check. Risa sees the first three numbers he puts in and immediately knows something's not right. She goes back to the marriage license, and sure enough, it's a different social. And now she's like, that's not his real social, but that is crazy. Legion is an ex-football player. This is what she gets from his new social legions, an ex-football player, which means there must be some record of him where he used to play San Diego State, but she calls him up nothing at all, and she confronts him about it. Like, did you graduate from this school? Did you play football for this school? And he's like, you know what? I was a private citizen. It's a private citizen. So my records are private. She even didn't know how to respond. It makes zero sense so she runs a full background on the new social. She gets the states he lived in addresses in each state names associated with his social contact information for those names. So first things, the man has never lived in California Terra, the ex-wife who he was married. They lived in Georgia, who so she did marry someone, but it was all in Georgia. She finds out a few lies about that relationship Legion never filed for divorce from Tara. Tara filed the divorce Legion was served with papers in Atlanta, not in California. Tara filed the divorce papers with her address, her email, and her phone number. So, Risa called Tara, saying this is Risa. I'm the wife of Legion who confirmed her suspicions. Tara's first response was, if you're calling me, I know it's bad, which made Risa laugh at the absurdity of her situation. So Risa asked her, Tara, could you give me anything? And Tara's like, I want it to be clear. I want nothing to do with this man. The last thing I want is to get involved in the middle of all of this. He is like a malignant cancer that won't go away. But Tara, 
Being a girl's trying to give Risa the lowdown, I understand that you and Legion communicate, and Tara's like, no, we don't. Let me make this clear. Whatever he tells you is a lie. Let me guess. He told you I cheated on him. He told you I wanted money from him. Tara tells Risa the full story, the actual story of how they met how they ended up. But at this point, the TikTok comments will be like, if Legion told me the sky was blue, I'd have to look. If he told me my own name, I'd have to check my ID. If Legion told me today is Thursday, I would check my calendar. Risa literally said, I'm turning into the FBI, the CIA, all in one, and she's not playing. She finds Legion's mother's obituary, which is what you write when someone dies. You can see who she's leaving in memory behind to cherish her memory. It's basically a list of living family members that she's connected to. Legion told her that his mother had four sons and two daughters, but his mother's obituary only lists three sons and zero daughters. That made no sense. He talks to his two sisters all the time on the phone. He talks to his three brothers all the time on the phone. How can he only have two brothers? Not only that, the obituary mentions the spouses of each child. Legion's name was not attached to Tara, his ex. It was Legion and his wife, Latoya. So he has more than one wife. Risa has just opened Pandora's box now. It's not a question of if he's lying. It's now a question of what else he is lying about. And that's only 2% of the lies so far. The most bizarre one is not even the lies, but the fact he would be on the phone for 45 minutes every single morning, but there would be no one on the other line, which was most shocking. Talking to himself for 45 minutes every day? That doesn't even make sense. Basically, Risa finds all of this out, and she's now planning to escape. She's tried marriage counseling, she's tried being civil, but she cannot take any more lies. Meanwhile, Legion is clueless. He's actually completely bedridden. The man suffered a knee injury. Risa ends up calling her pastor, who also happened to be their marriage counselor. This man never thought it would be this bad. He genuinely thought, it's not a great relationship, but this is another level. She told everything to the pastor, and he's like, wow. He asks her, do you have plans on sticking this thing out, or are you going to end it? And she tells him, yes, I'm leaving. I have to. I have no idea who that man in my guest bedroom is. Now, she's just walking past the guest bedroom on a daily basis, just patrolling, looking at him, trying to figure out the best way to get out of this. Legion ends up resigning from his job at the condiment company. Apparently, this is what he says. He also claimed that he got a new job at Apple. Now, here's the interesting thing. He never turned in his old work phone for the condiment business. Risa is thinking that's a little bit weird. There's probably a lot of confidential information on there as well. So she decides, when Legion falls asleep one day, she's going to grab his phone, lock herself in the bathroom, and just go through all of it. She just wants to know what's going on in there. Remember that she went through his personal phones before and found that he was cheating. So this time, she's going through his work phone. Risa finds a text thread that goes all the way back to February. This is like a month after they got married. They got married in January. Apparently, Legion met a girl named Peaches on a dating app. Peaches is texting Legion her prices. She said, $40 for a handy, $60 for a mouthy, but with a glove on, $80 for a mouthy with no gloves. Anyway, other messages are Legion asking for where she lives. Now, there is full concrete proof that this man is cheating, so she grabs her phone and takes a bunch of pictures. She starts texting them to herself. Another thing she finds when she goes through his photo album is a ton of screenshots that he had taken. They would be checking accounts with a balance of $9,000, another savings account with a balance of $115,000, a $90,000 company BMW screenshot, a screenshot of a random house in California, a screenshot of a loan approval, an offshore account, literally, she sent all of these to her own phone. She researched these images on Google, and all of them were on Google on the first page, which is kind of insulting. So there is no offshore account, and all of his bank accounts are a lie. His pre-approval for the mortgage is a lie. Everything, the job that he has, is barely enough to pay the household bills. She found out his real job, too. He's a temporary driver at a condiment company. Honestly, she's like, probably slept better that night knowing that this man is a lying cheater. But before she can confront him, Legion in the morning is like, I gotta go. She asks him, where are you going? Legion just decides out of nowhere 
that he must absolutely take a family road trip to see his family in Philadelphia by himself. So he drives 12 hours to Philadelphia with a bad knee, but he makes his way all the way over to see his family. He spends about four days. Risa is back home in Atlanta, and she gets a Facebook message one day from Legion's cousin saying, hey, can I talk to you? Because Legion's back at home in Philadelphia, and he's talking about some crazy stuff right now. So Risa gets on the phone with Sid, the cousin, and Legion has been telling the whole family in Philadelphia this wild story of why he's in Philadelphia. He was being chased. Someone's hunting him for money. He tells everybody in Philadelphia that one day he gets home to his wife. Risa walks into their marital home, and Risa is in bed with a law enforcement officer, a cop. To add insult to injury, Risa stole all of Legion's money and kicked him out of the house. When Legion tries to fight back, the officer uses the weapon to threaten Legion to get out of the house, so Legion flees to Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Doesn't the family already know at this point that he's a liar? He's sitting there basically being like, I need money. So he tells his family that he needs to stay in Philadelphia for a few days, and then he needs to report this officer. But the cousin called Risa instead, asking her, tell me what actually happened, because I know that's not what happened. I know Legion is a liar. He's been a liar ever since he's been a kid. Sid said, I didn't even know that he was married. Risa is sitting there so stunned, she doesn't even know what to say. He's talking to his brothers on a daily basis, but then his family is like thinking that she's sleeping with a law enforcement officer. Like, what is going on? Sid is like, what do you mean all of his brothers? How many brothers do you think he has? And she said, four brothers. Then Sid tells her he has two brothers. He's got an older brother, Chris, and then he has a twin brother. He's not only lying to Risa, but he's spinning a different story with every single family member. Risa is like, I want to find out everything. Like, I want to know the truth. At this point, Risa already made up her mind. Anything Sid is saying is just confirmation. So, she decides to give Legion one last chance to tell her the truth. Legion comes back from Philadelphia. He's laying in bed. Risa calmly walks in, sits down on the bed next to him. Risa starts confronting Legion about his lies, questioning if he ever attended San Diego State or lived in California. Legion denied these accusations, but Risa had already checked with the university and found no record of him. At this moment, Legion doesn't even look shocked. She said that his eyes looked empty, like he didn't look surprised or scared. He just looked at her blankly. Legion's lack of surprise or concern further confirmed Reese's suspicions. She calmly informed him that she no longer wanted to be married and insisted he leave her house immediately, despite Legion's protests and attempts to salvage the relationship, saying, no. I'm not going to give up on us. And she's like, you don't have a choice. So you call your brother or your imaginary sister and you need to pack a bag, okay? You need to get out of my house today. Risa said everything as calmly as she could. She's calculated, she's clear. She never mentioned her call with the ex, Tara, or even the cousin, like nothing. She doesn't even bring up all of the thousand other lies that she already knows about him. Legion is not budging. He picks up his phone and calls somebody and puts that person on speakerphone. Imagine being in a fight with your full-grown husband and he calls for backup in the middle of the fight. That is bizarre. He calls his aunt. Literally, he will be like, Auntie, my wife doesn't want me anymore. She's claiming that I'm lying to her and I've never lied to her. So Risa is pissed because not only is he lying straight to her face, but now he's spreading lies about her right in front of her face. Risa just kind of admits to this. All of a sudden, it's like everything turned red. Every fiber of her being went from being calm to just pure rage. Her eyes go wild. At that moment, Risa said she was accepting the fact that she probably won't have a job tomorrow. She's probably not going to sleep in her bed tonight because she's probably going to be in jail. Every part of her body is shaking. This is two years of manipulation, and it's about to burst. She said, I wasn't scared of him. I was scared of me. So Risa, she's like, you want to play this game? You want to be a little baby? Let me call my mom. And she calls her mom. Risa never told her mom about all of the lies and all of the red flags because, first of all, she doesn't want to worry her parents. She doesn't want to be a burden. So she calls her mom and tells her everything. Meanwhile, she's scanning the room. She said she's looking at all the objects, the lamp, the TV, the dresser. She's scanning for weapons. Legion's still trying to find a way out of this, like weaseling out of this. But Risa's mom tells him on speakerphone, Legion, I am not there to control my daughter. You get your stuff and get out of the house because I think my daughter is going to kill you. She gave him two options. One, either you leave voluntarily 
or two, you leave involuntarily. At this point, he's lying on the bed. He's not even standing up yelling and fighting. He's on the bed, so he tries to come at her, and he's yelling, so Risa yanks the covers back and starts slamming stuff at the wall. Now she's dead serious and she's picking up a lamp. He finally gets up. After hours of going back and forth, he ends up throwing a bunch of stuff into two backpacks. Risa is staring at him. As he's getting ready to leave, he looks over at her and says, you're really going to kick me out on my birthday? Apparently, it's his birthday. So she immediately starts just trashing everything. She wants to get rid of anything that has Legion's fingerprints on it. She wants to cleanse. She feels this overwhelming urge to reset her home. Risa immediately changes the locks, and she spends the next hour just stripping the entire bedroom of anything that he's touched. The plan was, she was considering going on Facebook Live and filming a burn party where she just films herself burning everything, but she saw the photo album and decided against it. She felt bad. She didn't throw away any of his stuff, actually. She just kind of gathered it. By the end of the day, Risa had one last thing that she needed to take care of. She gets out of the house, drives over to the bakery where she had already placed an order. She picks it up, heads to her parents' house, and they eat Legion's custom birthday cake together. Her family always had suspicions about Legion. Her grandpa straight up told Risa, he doesn't look like a football player, but her mom just knew that something wasn't right. So Risa is sitting back, and she's thinking to herself, what did I get into with my life? This is not even human. At some point, Legion's aunt calls Risa. Apparently, Legion has been trying to come and stay with his aunt, but she was just so confused. She kept calling Risa to see what happened. The conversation would end up breaking Risa's heart. Like all the other conversations that she's had with all these people, it's just confirmation that he's a liar. But this one was really sad. He wasn't just lying to Risa. Legion kept telling his aunt that Risa had the baby, and he was going to go visit her with the newborn baby. That was too much and Risa had to tell her, it's been a year since I've had a miscarriage. So Risa ends up apologizing for Legion, just like on behalf of her, about lying about having a baby. It's really sad and heartbreaking because I can imagine how Risa must have felt to hear that. It's like forcibly bringing all those memories a lot of questions. Legion had told Risa that his dad was a retired officer and that his mom was a retired teacher. Then they moved back to Georgia so that the dad could become a pastor and he started his own church. The brother is like, no, our dad was nowhere near a church. He never set foot in a church ever since the day that he was married at the chapel. He's like the furthest thing from a pastor. Our dad was a correctional officer for maybe a little bit, so he wasn't a cop, but his main career was a truck driver. She asked, when did you last speak to Legion? Because Legion talked to you and his brothers every single day. Chris said, I spoke to him six years ago after our father's funeral. Maybe Legion was talking on the phone, but it wasn't with me because he knows that if I ever see him or if I ever talk to him, I'm going to whoop his ass. I didn't even have an idea that he had a wife. Like, that's how bad it was. So at this point, Risa, not Legion, it's really crazy, creepy, and sad all at the same time. So Risa would basically ask, who is Legion then? But not of so it's just like any time Risa would get close to cracking him in a lie, he would lie that somebody died to just divert her attention and distract her. Legion has no idea that Risa has already talked to three of his family members. He would call her nonstop trying to make their relationship work, and Risa would just scream on the phone asking him, why did he even marry her? And the answer would be, I had to. I knew that in order to keep you, I had to marry you. And she asks him if he's ever been arrested as an adult or spent a weekend in jail, and he denies so he just kept lying on and on. Now, weekend jail means at this point, Risa doesn't know if she can finish this story. It's taking a toll on her mental health. The experience is overwhelming. Risa wanted to file for divorce. He's giving her excuses to make it longer, but she wants him to sign those divorce papers. Now, they don't have shared property or shared assets. This should be such an easy, done case. Now, the day comes that they're going to meet to sign, but he looks really bad. He's wearing the same clothes that he was wearing when she last saw him. He looks bad, and he smells bad. So, for a moment, she doesn't even recognize this man. Her heart kind of broke, but she's got to push forward. They sign the divorce papers, and that's it. As they're walking back to their cars, she can just tell he was sleeping in his car. It was just kind of a sad situation. He clearly doesn't have enough money to pay for anything especially food. She starts reaching out to see if anybody's been in contact with him. Everyone she reaches out to wants nothing to do with him. She said it was actually a really sad moment. Like as much as she was so upset with him and as much as she hated him for what he did, 
It was pretty sad. Risa checks her mail one day, and the divorce is finally approved. She broke down. It was really rough, all what she went through. She doesn't feel like the same person that she was before. She said that she's like a shell of a person. It was so much trauma for two years. But she later said in a TikTok that the older brother Chris stated Legion was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia when he was younger. But as he got older, he refused to take his meds, and Risa had no idea about any of this. Then later, Legion goes on Instagram after being famous now to talk about Risa. He basically states that Risa took advantage of him and essayed him that she cheated with a man named Bradley, and that's why they got divorced. He showed his divorce papers and called everybody haters. He said that there are two sides to every story. Legion goes, Risa, why are you lying on me? You know that's not right. You could tell me I need to pay my rent. You could have asked me for money, Risa. You don't need to lie on TikTok. I'm sorry I spent my money on HIV treatments. I have HIV now too because you messed around with Bradley and got me sick. And I'm keeping at peace so you got these people hating and attacking me on the internet. He screenshots text messages between him and Risa, but they seem very fake. So after he went on to have a whole interview, it was really long, two hours long, and he says, I do own a house. Risa is like a money-hungry girl that wanted me to buy her a house and wanted me to buy her a car, but she doesn't even understand the value of money. Like he was just saying he's not a liar. Risa is a liar. Risa cheated on him, and he did state that he does have an offshore account, how he makes $93,000 a year, and Risa only makes $33,000. His ultimate end result of all of this, his takeaway from this situation with Risa, was that he needs to marry someone on his same income level, basically saying that because she's so broke, she wanted all these things like a house and a car, and he didn't want to give it to her. So now she's spreading lies like this, also states that he's dating a new girl, and her dad works for the FBI, and was able to background check him. Then there are parts where he'll talk to her during the interview, and you can hear her laughing in the background. And people in the comments think it's a laugh track because it just doesn't sound. Risa, on the other side, has moved on. She's not responding to him. She's not letting this bother her. And she's finally got her blue check mark on TikTok. Now Risa is just getting a new start. She's doing everything on her bucket list. She's going to go to Europe, taking herself to London and Paris with the help of a few people and a few companies. Apparently, Delta offered free plane tickets and several hotels offered complimentary stays. So, she was on Good Morning America also. At the end of the day, Legion is out of her life. Dude, this is crazy and really complicated. So that's all I gotta say about that. Now, there are 52 parts to this story. She uploaded all this, like a full-time job at this point. She had time to record 52 installments. These installments are 10 minutes long each. This is dedication to telling her authentic truth. And to break it down for you, because you might not understand the scope of 52 different TikTok videos, that is like a movie series. Like she has literally created and produced a movie trilogy. Somebody tweeted and said, Risa Tisa just changed the social media game because she has got the whole world invested in a 52-part series. Absolute queen. She deserves all the good things she is giving out a free life lesson for real. Absolutely. Like this is not just entertainment. We can all be learning from this. Looking at the red flags learning what not to do. It's fantastic. And I think the interesting part to this is that she's very well-spoken. She's very organized. She's clearly intelligent. She gives some great analogies along the way, but like she's very self-reflective, which is appreciated. She tells you kind of the good and the bad. So obviously, the story is absolutely wild. And if you are into that sort of thing, go find her TikTok, turn it on while you are driving, you're cleaning the house, it's in a playlist so it'll automatically play, so you can just set your phone there, put on your headphones, and you can dive into the world of Risa Tisa. You will not get bored. It is literally like the perfect combination between an NCIS, Suits, Scandal Type show, and a true crime podcast. It's literally what the entire world needs right now. Obviously, this was crazy and very dramatic for her, but I'm just so glad that she did not face any financial consequences of having to be with him. He did not leave her any debt. Hopefully, he's not doing that to anybody now. In the comments, people say, her genuineness got me. Even the parts where she looked bad, the realness is the best. Somebody else said, and she does it so naturally, it doesn't feel forced, it doesn't feel scripted. 
extremely immaculate. I love this woman so much. I cannot tell you guys how much people love her and how obviously they are craving entertainment in stories that do not feel canned or forced. Well guys, that was it for today's video. I hope you liked it. What are your thoughts on this? Because that was just the most bizarre thing I ever heard. Please leave your thoughts in the comments, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.